Today is a monumental day, a fundamental shift in the way we've operated. As we temporarily set down our air saw and take a break from cutting holes in the sprinter, instead, we focus on the interior, more specifically, the front of the cabin. And if you know anything about building a versatile van, then you know what to do with those two front seats. Swivel, swivel, swivel. Swivel, swivel, swivel. Swivel, swivel, swivel. Rotate towards the middle. It is midnight. Are you seriously out here trying to make another YouTube? What is up my dudes and dudettes? Behind that camera is Colleen and I am Todd. And with any luck, this beautiful 40 pound chunk of steel is going under each one of our seats today. This is the Alpine Mechanism seat swivel. It is heavy, it is burly. It's made in the US of A and it is thin AF. This sucker only adds a half inch to your seat height and it's a great option if like us, you are unable to score the factory swivs. So hold on tight. It's gonna be like the teacup ride in here as we spin you right round. Let's get to it. All right, so step number one is disconnecting the battery. We're on the driver's side of the van here and the reason why we do this is because these seats actually have a lot of sensors in them. They also have an airbag and as funny as it would be for you to see me get hit in the face with that thing, it's something that I don't really want. I also don't want to have to drive to the dealership to pay them a bunch of money to reset any codes we may throw. So we're gonna zoom down into this area and see what that entails. All right, so we're looking at the driver's side floorboard here you can see we got our little battery icon. We're gonna go ahead and take this T20 Torx driver and we're gonna remove these two screws. Wait, 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 wait. We actually have a newer vehicle, so we don't need to do this. Let's zoom in again and see what we're talking about. Whee! So behind this panel is a quick disconnect for the battery, but there's a catch. It looks like a three-step process before we can pull this weird Schrader bike pump valve looking thing off. So according to that diagram, we need to let the van sit for about 20 minutes before we open up that panel and disconnect the battery. So I'm gonna go ahead and set that timer now. Hey Siri, set a timer for 20 minutes. Okay, searching the internet for why Popeye eats spinach. Thanks, Tim Apple. 20 minutes later. All right, so the way this panel comes off is actually pretty easy. You actually just reach up behind it like this, and you'll just pull, and those tabs right here will just pop off. So once the panel is removed, you can actually look in and see the quick disconnect right there. You kind of see the red button on the top. You simply just push that in and then pull the quick disconnect off the stud, and that will disconnect your battery. And this is what it looks like when everything is disconnected. There's that red button on the top that I was talking about, and that is the grounding stud back there. All right, we are under the driver's seat here. This is where my butt sits most of the time. And we're gonna go ahead and disconnect all these connectors. I count one, two, three, four. There's a fourth one back here you can't really see in the video. Uh, each van might be slightly different, but just go ahead and disconnect all of these. All right, so I take it back. My seat actually only had two connections. These other two connections were red herrings. They're actually just connected in the upper portion of the seat. We don't need to remove those. And so we just needed to remove these two connectors. For this white one, you can see this little spring here. I just depressed that to get that one out. And the yellow one was a little bit more difficult, but not bad at all. It just has these two clips on the side that you need to press in simultaneously to remove. So now that that's done, we can actually pull this seat off the frame. Okay, so now we're gonna go ahead and remove the seat from the base frame. It's done by removing these four screws. There is one on each corner. And technically, if you wanna get technical, we're supposed to have a Torx driver to do this. But I actually found that a number 10 standard hex 
works no problem. It's a little bit loose, but for all intents and purposes, we'll be removing these screws and not putting them back in. So I think we're good to go. Let's go ahead and get to that now. Here I'm removing the two front bolts. To access these, the seats need to be slid backwards to their most rear position. All right, we're gonna pause right here for a Todd tip. It's a Todd tip. This actually just occurred to me. If you have an electronic seat in your van, one that requires power to move the seat forward and back, you'll actually want to reverse your order of operations a little bit. That's because you can't actually access these bolts in the rear unless the seat is all the way forward. And it's the same for the bolts in the front. The seat has to be all the way back in order to access those. So what you'll need to do is first remove all the bolts by moving your seat forward and back, then disconnect the battery, and then disconnect the plugs on the seat that actually connected to the van. Let's carry on. We've slid the seat all the way forward and now we are removing the rear two bolts. Oh hey, here's another Todd tip for you. It's a Todd tip! Remove the front bolts first and then the rear. The reason why is because the seat is a lot more stable in the forward position with no bolts. If you remove the front bolts second, you're gonna be fighting gravity the whole time while the seat's in the rear position. All four bolts have been removed and we're gonna go ahead and lift the seat up and I'm just gonna set it in the back of the van here for now. Ooh, get small. These Alpine mechanism seat swivels are ambidextrous. That means they'll send you a single part type for both the passenger side of the vehicle and the driver's side of the vehicle. The way they distinguish which is which is determined on which color faces up. This green gray color facing up is for the driver's side of the vehicle. And then this black color is for the passenger side of the vehicle. I already feel there's enough pokey yoke in the fact that this circle is off center that you could easily just say, position this towards the back of the vehicle and then the inside. And that already gives you enough information to set it up in the correct orientation. And I would have much preferred the entire piece painted this black color. I feel it's just a more attractive and muted color um, that will go with the aesthetic of the van. So that's just my two cents. If I pick this up here, and I set it on here. Remember we want the logo towards the front or this circle towards the rear of the van and towards the inside of the van. You can actually see where the cables come up and where they need to come up. The cables actually need to come up through here. I'm gonna leave this foam piece on. And so in order to route the cables, I don't wanna route them all the way underneath there. I'm gonna go ahead and cut a little kind of star slot here. It's right in the middle of this hole, and that will give me a little area to pass the cable up through. And then I'm just gonna reroute these cables through this new slot. There's plenty of length here too. There's a nice service loop down in there, so no need to worry about that. All right, and then re-tuck this back in. Just like that. You could probably get rid of this foam. Um, I'm gonna leave it. The reason why is I have dogs and so just dust and hair from them kind of tends to accumulate in places. So I figure this would be nice to at least have some sort of protection keeping dog hair out of here. And so now we're ready to put the Alpine Mechanism seat swivel on. For this part, same kind of thing. Feed the wires through here and then just set this down. And the holes line up great. And because this is in a new position, you might wanna pull a little bit of service loop out here just so that you have some extra length. We are now ready to bolt this sucker down. In each swivel box, you'll find a bag of hardware containing four flathead cap screws that attach the swivel to the seat riser, four flathead cap screws with a nylock nut that will attach the actual seat to the swivel, and finally, one stainless steel sheet metal hard stop that prevents over rotation and movement in the locked position. All right, now that we have this set on here, I'm gonna go ahead and attach it. We're gonna use the four flathead screws that didn't have the nylock nut and a six millimeter hex key. In order to gain access to the holes, we'll have to pull this pin up and rotate the top plate about 20 degrees. 
And then we go ahead and just uh, insert these four bolts. You always make sure you loosely tighten all four bolts first and then tighten in kind of a crisscross square pattern. The actual frame, sheet metal frame, is not perfectly square. So this just helps square it up as you tighten everything down. Once everything is snug, we're gonna use a torque wrench to tighten everything down to 35 foot pounds. That's 47.5 Newton meters. My torque wrench reads in Newton meters. And you'll only wanna do the three bolts, two on the inside and one in the rear. This one gets that hard stop, so you don't need to tighten that one to spec just yet. Okay, now we're gonna install the hard stop on that front outside bolt. Swivel the plate until the pin locks. And then you'll wanna take a six millimeter or quarter inch hex key and loosen up the front outside bolt just enough that you can slide the hard stop underneath the bottom plate. Then you'll wanna squeeze these two plates together by pushing down on the top one and simultaneously pushing in the hard stop as far as it will go. It might help to have an extra set of hands for this part, but once everything is in this position, re-tighten the bolt and torque to that same 35 foot-pound spec as before. So it's Saturday and I'm sitting on the ground next to a seat. It feels pretty strange to sit next to a seat and not sit in it, but that's besides the point. We gotta remove these pins. These need to be cut off so that this can sit flush to the Alpine Mechanism seat swivel. I did use the air saw on the passenger side. It worked pretty good, but it ate blades like crazy. It's just a lot of steel to cut through. So this time I'm going old school with the hacksaw. Hopefully this works a little bit better. Hacksaw versus seat pin. Fight! Round two. Fight! Finish it. All right, so the hacksaw did great and it did a majority of the work. Now we just gotta take the Dremel with a sanding wheel just to clean everything up and make it perfectly flat, like the earth. <laughs> just kidding, the earth is round. Or is or it? Isn't. Using the Dremel, sand away any high spots left behind by the pin. Since we're gonna be covering this up with paint, I also sanded anywhere the blade touched the surface. All that dremeling left us with exposed metal on the bottom of our seat rails. You know what we do every time there's exposed metal. We paint it with rust preventative paint. Our method of choice has always been take a cheap can of spray paint, spray it into a disposable cup, and then use a cheap foam brush to wipe it on. Paint using this method can be surprisingly thin. That's why we use the foam brush, because it acts like a sponge preventing drips. However, you still have to be careful using this method because like a sponge, you can also wring everything out of it if you squeeze hard enough. Light touches go a long way here. The paint has had a chance to dry and you can see I've rotated the swivel so that I have access to the four corner bolt holes from the underside of the top plate. Now I'll go ahead and set the seat on top. All right, go ahead and put one bolt in. I don't know if you're gonna see this, but it's kind of sliding around a little bit, so stabilize it. This should be good. For the actual attachment of the seat rail to the swivel, we'll use the flathead and the nylock nut. The flathead comes up from underneath, and then you put the nylock nut on top. Once you have these screws and nuts loosely fitted in all four locations, you're going to go ahead and tighten everything down. I'm using a 17 millimeter socket and then a 6 millimeter hex. Install the front bolts, slide, slide, slippity slide that seat back again. You can see here I had to play around with the angle a bit because it was hitting the B pillar as it moved back. Then you'll simply tighten these up and we're ready to party. Before reconnecting the battery, plug back in all connections under both seats. If you forget to do this, it's not the end of the world, but you will have to pay some money to the dealership to reset the OBD codes for you. All right, double, triple confirm those seat connections and then we can reach back into the quick disconnect compartment, push that plug back on that stud and give it a tug to make sure it's fully seated. Then you'll close up that compartment, say a quick prayer, hop in the driver's seat, 
fire up the engine, say one more prayer, and if you're code free, you are golden. Thanks for watching our video. We had so much fun making it. If you like what we're doing, go ahead and give us a thumbs up below. It really helps us out. And if you have any questions, leave a comment in the comment section below. And as always, don't forget to slap that subscribe button. Thanks for coming. We'll see you next time. Today is a now. <laughs> All right, our fault. Our fault. All four bolts have been removed. Say bye, Kismo. Bye bye. <laughs> <laughs>